All right, uh, this is a quick video on how I flat uh, how I flat color artwork in Manga Studio Five. Um, this is an illustration I did recently uh, here, and this is the finished piece. You can see that when I turn off the coloring layer, underneath are are flat solid colors, and this is always the first step after. Whoop, let's put in a white layer here after the. Um, the line art. And, oh gosh, this is a mess. Okay, after the line art, <clears throat> I'll go in and put in the solid shapes. And the reason I do this is because when I start to, uh, to brush in the colors and textures, I want to be able to quickly make selections. You know, for example, starting to paint the alien skin. So I will quickly select that, quickly select her face. Um, in this case, we'll want to turn follow adjacent pixel off so I can select all of her skin at once or the rope. Uh, makes it super easy. Uh, it's a pretty common technique in comic book coloring. So this is a children's book illustration I'm working on and it needs to be flatted so I can go in and color it. So what I'll do is make a new layer underneath the line art. We we'll call it flats and I will turn the, the ink layer down, uh, you know, 70%. Uh, this way I can see where my flats go into the line art. And you want them to overlap the line art just a little bit. Now the reason I love Manga Studio when comp compared to Photoshop is it has a, a really smart paint bucket and selection uh, tool set. You can customize them a lot more uh, and also they they're really good, especially the paint bucket, is good at filling right up to the edge or even automatically expanding into the line art. And it can get a little complicated at first because there's so many options. Uh, but for instance, what I'll do here, let's go to my flats layer and turn on area scaling set to two pixels, which me just means that when I fill something, it'll expand by two pixels and then turn on multiple referencing and I, I have a bunch of different choices I could I could reference only the layers that I select or reference all the layers which is what I'm doing here so in this case I want to start filling in this girl's skin just like that it's it's very easy um, in some cases, you might have to go in with the brush tool and fill in some areas. There we go. Let's put in a background first. I usually try and keep the background on a separate layer. And I should say too, when I'm putting in flats, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to what the colors actually are. Uh, this is because I want it to be a very quick process. I'm really only interested in putting in um, shapes that will be easily selectable. Usually I'll just go back in and um, usually I'll just go back in and change a lot of the colors anyway. There's probably going to be a situation coming up here where I can't just use the paint bucket, but so far it hasn't happened.
Okay, a good example would be these leaves. Um, because the leaves have a lot of lines in them, it's probably going to be easier just to go in and just draw it real quick inside the leaf and fill it. Like this. And I'll need to turn off the multiple referencing because all I want to do now is fill in the shape that I just made. Start doing this dude. This guy definitely has a lot of uh, detail in the line work, so it's going to be the paint bucket probably would not be very useful here. So I'm just going to go in and use this. <clears throat> and as I'm drawing, I'm just being careful to you know, overlap the line art but not go past it. And I also don't, see I, I colored over the, uh, the stick here and his hair. I don't really care a whole lot about that because I'm, I'm st just going to go in and put shape right over it anyway. Go. This might work. And see if we if you zoom in, you can see that the um, area scaling is basically it automatically grows two pixels, so it co it covers the line art or overlaps the line art, which is a little bit, which is exactly what we want, which is which is awesome. Usually in Photoshop, I have to you know make a selection and then take another step to expand the selection. Who's got time for that? Alright, let's do the shoes. In this case, this shoe here, I don't even have to draw a shape because, oops, well, if I wasn't doing the multiple referencing, it basically is already, ah, oh, no, it's not. If I just enclose, if I wall off that one small area right there, then it's, it's good to go, except for that mess. So that was a terrible example then. All right, let's cover his bag real quick. Look for any areas that we missed. And if I, ha if I haven't already said it, um, I like to work from a swatch palette because it's a lot quicker than, than using the picker to, to kind of sit down and, and think about what color you're about to use. It just takes, it's just another step that you don't need since I'm, gonna be, I'm not real worried about what these colors are anyway. Bam, 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 bam. All right, there we go. So let's turn that back up. Take a look over it. It looks like we um, forgot about our hair, which is a problem. Nope. 
Turn off multiple referencing. There we go. <clears throat> this is the bleed up here anyway, so a lot of that will get cut off. All right. Now, those, this isn't real pretty looking, but this is exactly what I need to start coloring. Um, and once I do that, I'll be adding in all the shading and the texture and the lighting and everything. But I'll always have this layer here to, to go back to and just quickly grab a selection. And here real quick too, what I love about Manga Studio is when I make a new layer, that's you know this will be my colors layer. Um, actually, I usually just make a duplicate of my flats layer so I have something to start with. I can make this flats layer a reference layer and then change my wand right here to only reference the uh, the reference layer. So what that means is when no matter what's going on, no matter what layer I'm on, whenever I'm clicking in an area, it's only selecting from that flat layer, which is awesome because in Photoshop, usually I would have to switch back to the flats layer, get the wand out, click where I want to color, switch back to my coloring layer, and start coloring on it. Here, I never have to change layers. All I have to do is quickly change my tool to the wand, and that's it. Really cool. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.